everyone, Tim Brown. Welcome back to my Apple Podcast and welcome back to part three of my series of tutorials on Responsive Layout Maker Pro for the Mac. With this application, you can create responsive websites. And I left off just as I was about to export my project. I'm now at the stage where I'm going to edit my HTML files as well as show you how to embed video into your site so that it is also responsive. In order for it to work in a responsive design, I have to do the following. I want you to go to layouts and then go to manage project, just like before. And in this section, you're gonna paste a little bit of text that references a custom CSS file that you're gonna add later on when your project is exported. So for example, I have the code right here and I'm gonna include it in the show notes later. I'm gonna copy this link to the custom style sheet and I'm gonna paste it right into the header here. And I'll zoom in here too so you can see it. We have to do this for each page. So right now I'm on a PS Touch page. I'm gonna go through each page and do the exact same thing. Okay, we're now ready to export our project. Before we do that, we wanna to go to Actions, and then go to Settings, and make sure you have your, your project has a name. So I'm just gonna call it Photo Apps as my name. Click Save. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do File and Export. Okay, once you have exported your project to a desired location, this is what you wind up with. Four separate folders with your assets. JavaScript, IMG for your images, folder for fonts and a folder for cascading style sheets. And along with those, you see the four HTML pages that I, ha I have set up to correspond with the photo applications that I'm reviewing. Now at this point, there are several things that we have to do to make sure our project is working properly. We have to open up the HTML pages and make sure the export path is correct regarding the images that we're using and that the links are set up properly. We also need to make some adjustments to the cascading style sheets in order to ensure that the YouTube video plays properly. So this is what we're gonna do first. We're gonna open the IMG folder. And what you're gonna see are a bunch of images that were set up by default through the placeholders that we used. Of course, they all have to be changed because these are actually not the images that we're gonna use. Now, I knew I had to do this ahead of time, so I went ahead and set up the photos that I'm actually going to use in a separate folder that I'm going to drop right in here. So as you can see here in this other finder window, I already set up an IMG folder with the correct images inside. These are images that correspond with the applications that I'm going to be reviewing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to drop this IMG folder right in the same location, which is going to prompt me to replace the existing one. Okay, now that my images are updated, I now need to update the HTML pages to correspond with the correct identification. So using the index file as an example, I'm gonna open it up in my favorite text editor. You can use any text editor you want. I use Taco. And as you can see, starting from top to bottom, if you recall that custom CSS file that we referenced in the header tag is visible along the top here. So that's there, that's great. You can see that there are three images being referenced in the center here. Those are the source images for my links to the different pages. And then at the bottom is the source image for my logo, which I plan to put at the bottom of the home page. So let's go ahead and update those links. If I go to my image folder, you can see here I have three icons to represent the three applications. The first one was handyphoto.jpg. So as the image source, that's what I'm going to put here. Handyphoto.jpg. I had already entered that name before, so I was pretty accurate there. Uh, the others I did not. So for the second link, it's going to be Leonardo, and that's Leonardo.jpg. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the image source to IMG slash Leonardo. I 
.jpg. And then likewise for the last one, which is Photoshop Touch. Okay, so now that I've updated the identification of my files and made sure that the path was correct, I can now preview my index file to make sure the images are now being read correctly. And sure enough, they are. This is exactly how I planned it out. So you can see how I used the placeholders originally to map things out order to in order to replace the source code later on with the exact files that were actually being used. And if I was to move this over, I can see how this is going to look on a smaller device. So now in addition to updating all the image files for the various different pages of my site, I now have to go into and update those image links, particularly the image links on the index page that I use to link to the other pages of the site. So I'm going to go back into my taco editor or HTML editor, and you'll see those three images in the center that are referenced. They are also linked to pages of the website. And I need to make sure that these references are correct. In some cases, I didn't even list a reference as in the second image, which would be Leonardo.html. And then the last one should actually be PS Touch html now if i go back to my files just to make sure leonardo.html ps touch.html handy photo.html those are the correct titles and so now my links should be correct so now when we go and test those pages out we should also be able to link correctly to the pages they're referencing okay so let's look at our final edits let's go to handy photo that looks pretty good leonardo looks pretty good and PS touch let's also see what it looks like when it's responsive so as we bring into a smaller window you see everything condenses and it looks pretty good on the desktop as well as on the phone the one thing that's missing of course we still haven't addressed the YouTube video which is we're going to address to wrap up this tutorial okay so as you can see here here are my HTML pages uh, aside from the index page the other pages I want to add videos that correspond with the applications that I'm focusing on. And I have YouTube videos already set up on my channel. All I have to do now is just grab the iframe code or embed code from those videos and add them to my HTML pages. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So here is my YouTube review of PS Touch. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the embed code from this video. I'm going to copy that. I'm now going to go ahead and open the HTML page that references that particular application in my editor. And down below is that image again that I put as a placeholder just to give you an idea of or give myself an idea where I wanted the video to go, but actually I want to replace it. So where it says div class equals coffee span. 12 and then the image class underneath I'm just going to go ahead and just remove that and replace it with the iframe code Now I also need to add something another div class before the iframe code. I'm going to add bracket div class equals Quotation video hyphen container That's actually referencing the CSS file that I'm going to add to the CSS folder. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and let's minimize that for a moment. And we're going to go to the CSS file. And you see you have a bunch of files, but one file you do not have typically is the custom CSS. I just added this file there. So let me go ahead and open it so you can see what it is that I added. I added an additional file and I called it custom CSS. And this is the file that's being referenced in the header tag that we added earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this so you can see exactly what we're adding here. Basically, this little bit of code is going to enable us to play the YouTube video and have it become responsive so it adjusts to different size windows. And that's what I'm referencing when I list video container in the HTML code right before the iframes. 
So let's go ahead and test out this page to see how the video looks. So here is the PS Touch video page and as you can see my video now appears along the bottom. And if I was to reduce this window in size you see that the video now conforms to the size of the window. So regardless of how small it is the video will adjust the same way that everything else is adjusting. So that little bit of adjustment with this the, the additional CSS file enables us to have a responsive video right on our page. And I'm going to go ahead and update all of my pages so every page responds just like that. Okay, so I was able to test my project out on a browser. Now that I have my files uploaded to the server, now that everything's working, we can now test it out on multiple platforms. So I have the website now up on my iPad in horizontal mode and on my iPhone in vertical mode. And so let's go ahead and browse through the site using both devices. So I'm going to click on Handy Photo on the iPad and then Handy Photo on the iPhone. So we can get a sense of how the website is formatted as it is displayed on both devices. Okay, the website is coming in on both devices. I'm going to scroll down and see here I have the video down below for Handy Photo. And likewise on the iPhone, same thing. Only thing, as you can see, they've been formatted for both devices. So let's scroll back up and we're going to go back to the home page on both devices. And let's try another page. Let's just try PS Touch. And likewise, as you can see, it's being formatted so that it works on all devices. Looks nice on the iPad and looks nice on the iPhone. So this is the benefit of having a responsive design. And one of the reasons why I like this application and I encourage you to buy it mainly because it gives you that kind of flexibility that you typically do not have. And let's face it, responsiveness is where it's at today. I mean, to be able to have a responsive website is truly viable in today's market. I hope you enjoyed this three-part series on Responsive Layout Maker Pro. My name is Tim Brown. Check me out next time.